Picture this scenario. You're driving down the street and your favorite song is blasting on the radio. When all of a sudden, you're not exactly sure where to go, what exit to take, or which street to turn down. Rather than reaching for a map or maybe your phone, you turn down the radio instead. But if the radio isn't using your eyes, then why do you need to turn it down? It's because some forms of multitasking are harder than others. And you can thank your brain for that. Humans need to multitask. It's in our nature. When you're on the phone, you might find yourself pacing around the house without even realizing you're doing it. Or when you're at work in that meeting, you're still listening, but now you're going through your daily to-do list, or maybe you're doodling. And when you're watching The Bachelor, or Monday Night Football, you're also scrolling through your phone, or eating a snack. We multitask because there's an absence of stimulus in these moments. Face-to-face -face conversation usually provides us with physical feedback. But on the phone, we don't have that. We only have the emotional connection. So your brain fills in what it thinks it's missing, the physical feedback, and so you start pacing. Meetings can be long and boring, and we don't want to fall asleep in front of our superiors. So we activate other stimuli to keep ourselves interested. Doodling can actually help you focus, and there are even studies that prove it reduces stress. These types of multitasking feel beneficial. When we focus our attention on one thing, it activates both sides of our prefrontal cortex, AKA the motivational part of your brain. But your brain doesn't want to focus on one thing. And that's because your prefrontal cortex craves novelty. It wants to be hijacked by new information. And those new things feel really good to our brain. These new stimuli cause a surge of endogenous opioids, or endorphins, to the reward-seeking parts of our brain. And when we start doing two things at once, even though it feels like we're focusing on them at the same time, we're actually not. You're actually switching between the two sides of your prefrontal cortex. Each of those switches, which are appropriately called attention switching, take a fraction of a second. Those seconds can start to add up. And in the end, it will take you longer to finish both tasks. They might also be riddled with mistakes, because the more you exert your brain, the faster it gets tired. Think of your working memory like any other muscle lifting weights. After a few reps, it needs to rest and recover. And when you multitask for an extended period of time, it's like jumping from machine to machine without a break, and your brain will really start to wear out. But that depends on the type of task. There are simple tasks, like driving down a monotonous highway, which can be done almost subconsciously. And complex tasks, like driving through a confusing neighborhood, which you have to focus on. Complex tasks have a higher cognitive load and therefore take more of a toll. So when you're driving your car around the neighborhood and talking on your cell phone, those are two complex tasks and you'll start to make mistakes or you'll miss things. Oh, that was the house. Throw in following directions, and that's three complex tasks. And now you're even likelier to make a wrong turn. What the hell? Yeah, Yo, you're getting on the freeway. What? No turn right, get out of the lane. Oh, it's it's oh. But if the cognitive load is low, to put it simply, with less distractions, your brain will start to function better. The messages your neurons send each other will now be clearer and stronger. But because our brain craves new stimuli, we're more likely to start doodling or say, turn on the radio when we don't have a lot going on because it helps us focus. Oh my God, it's our jam. This is our jam. This is our jam, ladies. Come on. Oh my God. Yes. But listening to loud music while you're doing a complex task can be really distracting. Dr. Steven Yantis, a professor in the Department of Psychological and Brain Sciences at John Hopkins University, elaborates on the problem with that. He says, when we're listening to something else, it turns down the volume on the input of the visual parts of the brain. Attention is strictly limited. When attention is deployed to one modality, say, talking on a cell phone, it necessarily extracts a cost on another modality, 
say the visual task of driving. He's talking about divided attention, or multitasking. A study in Sweden performed an MRI scan on 32 participants and showed that when people were visually focused on something, their responsiveness to their auditory nerves, their ability to hear, decreased. Your brain is quite literally turning down the volume of external noises so you can see and focus better. If your subconscious can't turn down the volume on its own, maybe the noises are too loud or too constant, then your urge will be to turn it down yourself. That results in you reaching for the radio knob or snapping at your poor mother in the passenger seat. Sorry, mom. If the background noise isn't bothering you, then that's your brain doing a good job. So while you're just driving down that monotonous highway, listening to the radio is actually helpful. The driving is actually less of a complex task and listening to music or a podcast provides new stimuli and it keeps the drivers focused the same way doodling in meetings do. But the second you get to that suburban web of streets and your instinct is to turn the radio down, follow that instinct because it's your brain's way of not making mistakes, which when it comes to a moving car can be quite dangerous. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And ring the bell below, that way you're notified whenever we post a new video.